The focus of our grand challenge study, it was not just thinking about what could be invented, but was rather more focused on what needed to be invented. These problems are no longer simply those of business or politics. That if we don't have the appropriate leadership in technology and development of new solutions to these problems, they simply will not be solved. This next century is going, is going to be one that is very different. It is going to be one that does look at, at broad and integrated concepts like the vulnerability of our world like the sustainability of our way of life and our environment and the betterment of civilization. You know, the contributions that engineering can make to the health of our environment is extraordinary. It's only going to be engineering that will, will, will get us where we want to go. These are issues that are affecting the global planet. These are issues that are affecting every person's life and will be more so in our children's and their children's generation. Um, in the case of nitrogen, there are ways of developing fertilizers that operate more efficiently so you don't need to use so much of it, and the better ways of distributing water and fertilizer to plants. If we can crack any of these challenges having to do with energy, whether it's a total revolution in how solar cells work and how they can become economical, if it is even sequestering the carbon dioxide that uh, is generated by burning of fossil fuels, if it is nuclear fusion, any one of these alone could be a game changer in a very important way. So these are various technical challenges for dealing with the legacy problems from the 19th to the 20th century. This infrastructure that was built during the 20th century, including the electrical distribution infrastructure, and the sewage infrastructure, the, the water distribution infrastructure, is decaying and deteriorating. Reverse engineering the brain is actually a brilliant challenge because we're using Mother Nature's blueprint to understand exactly how this complex entity called the human brain works, how it functions. The technologies developed by engineers to instrument the work of neuroscientists and the ability of engineers to understand, analyze, and work with extremely complex systems will enable us to do things like personalized learning and therefore improve the education for each individual. We can't move into 21st century medicine without health informatics. It's that information that is the step, is the analytical tool that will explain the elements of both prevention as well as therapy of health, illness, wellness. Thanks to engineering and technology, uh, we will be able to break into a whole new dimension of medicine Technology should not be just about fixing problems we face, but a way of giving us a better appreciation of who we are and what our universe is. Virtual reality is already here in some forms. We still are very fuzzy on how it can be most effectively used in the future. This is not dealing with a problem we are facing today. It's looking for a way of giving us a broader vista of life, giving us a greater appreciation of our own potential. We are on a planet that is shrinking. Many of the threats, the nefarious threats, like a nuclear bomb, and also the natural threats, they bring us all together. We are not just an isolated nation or an isolated state or community or individual. And I think that engineering is going to enable us to look at this in a much more global way and, and come up with solutions that are for all of us. Another legacy of the 20th century is the vulnerability of the cyberspace on which we have become dependent. So we need to be developing the processes and technologies that will reduce that vulnerability. We know we can make clean water, but wait a minute, right now it's just too expensive. Whether it's reverse osmosis or, or, or some other nano approach where you can do it even better. 
we will be able to make this not only faster, better, cheaper, but more widely available. These grand challenges will stretch our human capability for understanding and creativity. Otherwise, they wouldn't be grand challenges. So these are things that this committee of international experts and creative people can see as possibly being solvable. They have the ring of things that we can and must do. The precise path is unknown. That's what makes them challenges, and their deep importance is what makes them grand challenges. Advancing society is about technology, and our children and our children's children are going to feel the benefits of the grand challenges of engineering. Engineers have a very, very challenging job ahead of them. I think they're up to it.